For about a year, Heather and I have had the fun of playing with Texture Magic, and we've learned a lot along the way that we'd like to share with you. When you take the Texture Magic out of the package, you're going to be very tempted to press it before you start. Don't do that. You don't want to hit the Texture Magic with hot steam until you've got it stitched to the fabric because otherwise it's going to shrink before you're ready and you're not going to get the magic. So just if it's got wrinkles or creases in it, smooth it out with your hands on the back of your fabric, pin it to the fabric, and then you're ready to go. When we started stitching with Texture Magic, we thought that it was important to follow lines on fabric or to mark something so that we'd have lines to follow. And on everything that we did, we marked lines on the back. And what we usually used was a stencil or a ruler to mark these lines. And sometimes we just took the ruler and lined it up with lines and marked lines like this. Other times we followed the diagonal lines that are on the ruler and we marked lines at 45 degree angles. So you could take your ruler, mark the 45 line on the edge of your Texture Magic, and then mark your line. It was quick and simple to do. I quickly learned that if I used a stencil, because I have a good selection of stencils, I could lay my stencil down and just trace through the lines very rapidly and never have to worry about a ruler. I thought that was really smart to come up with a quick way to do it. And then we figured out that after we got done steaming, you really couldn't tell that we had gone to all that work to mark all those nice straight lines. Once it's shrunk and steamed around the, the fabric, you couldn't tell. So we quickly learned all we really need to mark if we're going to stitch in a grid is one long line this way maybe and one long line this way to give us a guide to start with and then we could do several methods to get a grid. I usually just eyeball it. I will start that stitch there and then I'll go maybe about an inch apart with straight lines based on that all the way down. Heather has a machine that has a guide for the foot and she puts that on her machine and starts stitching with that and we will show you that in a later segment as well. But, but you can just follow those with your machine. You can also use, use your machine at, foot as a guide and just stitch the foot's, a foot's width apart. I have found that I like to have my stitching no more than about an inch and a half apart and not much closer than about a half of an inch apart. If you go too close, you don't have enough fabric in the stitched area to puff up. And if you go too far apart, you have a little bit too much fabric in there to get much texture. So I have used a rule of thumb of one half inch to one and a half inch for my stitching. This is a piece that Heather used to stitch using where she marked one long, actually on this one she was able to follow a guide on the front of the fabric and then she just eyeballed it along those lines but stitched in about a three quarter inch grid apart one direction and then turned it and went the other direction on each stitch. So you can mark if you choose, mark one line, mark the whole thing. If you want to do a fancy design, you could take a, a stencil, for instance, that has a feather and mark that on your fabric. When we mark, we usually use a little Sharpie marker. We have found that because this is fairly um, opaque, you can put it on the back of fabric and even if you have lines marked on here, most fabrics you don't have to worry about it showing through. In a later segment we're going to show you a pretty little um, christening gown that we made and I stitched that on a white satin. In that instance I chose to um, mark it with a mechanical pencil because I didn't want, the run, want to run the risk of a Sharpie black pen showing through. But this is my choice if I have a fabric that's not too light because it's really easy to mark with. It slides really easily and it's a permanent thing so it's not going to wash out. Because you're always putting the texture magic on the bottom part of your project, you don't have to worry about having marking lines that are removable because they're going to be hidden in the bottom of your project.